All right, so what we have here is a wild edible plant. It's very high in starches and they're extremely abundant, so you could uh, use them for quite some time. Uh, there's not really a whole lot of uh, poisonous lookalikes beside uh, daffodils and irises, but uh, if you pick these, then uh, you'll know immediately from the root that uh, it's a cattail. So this is the root, it's squared off with some small uh, kind of feathery type roots coming out. And uh, these right now are uh, too mature to be edible, although you probably could if you absolutely had to. You want the uh, young, young ones that are about a foot to a foot and a half high. They have a white uh, heart in here, and this is what you're after. It layers off kind of like an onion, and uh, you want to cut off the green part because they're uh, quite tough. And you can eat these raw or boil them or steam them. Usually raw is ideal, but you want to pick a clean spot, not on the side of the road where there's runoff and stuff and contaminants, because plants tend to absorb where they grow. So, uh, yeah, again, these are uh, one of the most abundant wild edibles around, and they're uh, extremely healthy, and they're full of energy, starches, and sugars. This part here is useful for a lot of things that can replace uh, padding or cotton or some other things. So it has a use all around. Again, uh, the only poison lookalikes would be irises and daffodils. They have bulbs and they have uh, flat, wide grass, almost blade type uh, leaves, and they grow together kind of flat. So, I mean, you'll be able to tell one apart from a cattail quite easily. This isn't going to have a bulb, it looks just like this. And uh, one of the things I mentioned previously is if you're unsure, you can always reference the dead standing plants growing next to it, and that'll uh, be a telltale sign of what it is that you have here. So cattails. And uh, I gotta tell you, there's a lot of uses for this one as a uh, medicinal plant, not so much edible. It's got a, it has a pretty bad odor, and the part you're after is a root. It's got all the uh, medicinal properties of it. And uh, it doesn't seem to be very common, but where it does grow, it's uh, quite abundant. As you can see, the uh, white flower heads, they're quite uh, abundant here in this one area, but you could uh, go a long time and not see one. So uh, anyways, So one good thing about valerian is it doesn't look like the uh, poisonous uh, plants in this family. Um, the signs that you can tell this plant is it's got a hairless brown streaked stem. And the flower umbels, they grow, uh, have a tendency to grow opposite of each other, stepped out. Like uh, you can see here, and then like that. So if we go up to the next set of flower heads, same thing. They grow out like that from each other. And they have a brilliant, brilliant white flower. They uh, stand out quite a lot. And uh, depending on where they're growing, they can take on a pink color. The leaves are the biggest giveaway of the identity of this plant. So here's the leaf of the valerian plant. They're growing compound, which means they're opposing each other all the way out like a ladder. And then the uh, tip, they've got one single leaf sticking straight out. And you can see the uh, very sharp, abundant teeth off the edge of the plant. I haven't seen any other plant member in this family that looks like this. So it's uh, not a parsley type looking leaf that's indicative of carrot or poison hemlock. And it's not a broad leaf that's indicative of uh, water parsnip or water hemlock. So you're looking for the closely uh, compound leaves with the sharp tooth uh, abundant teeth sticking out and uh, again these leaves tend to grow opposite from each other just like the flower bracts and you can see the really uh, really brown streaked stem hairless so the uh, medicinal value of this plant is in the roots here we have a root right here it's uh, known for being quite smelly often described as uh, the smell of old gym clothes. And uh, the best way to use this plant is uh, to dry it out and uh, use it, utilize it as a type of a tea or a herbal remedy. It cures many ailments, including high blood pressure, heart issues, 
it'll uh, help with uh, sleep apnea. It uh, causes drowsiness without the uh, nauseating sensation the next day that many drugs are known for. So this is a very good sleep aid. And uh, this is something you're going to want to uh, consume in moderation. It's, uh, yeah, I can really smell the uh, pungent odor of this plant. So the roots are quite, uh, it's not a tap root. It's, uh, yeah. Oof, that smells. But uh, again, valerian, if you're lucky to find this uh, and identify it, then, uh, yeah, take it. So when you're out foraging for a plant of this uh, species, you want to pick the first year plants. This plant is a biennial, which means that when it grows up, it doesn't mature and grow flowers until the second year. The first year plants are going to be smaller, and uh, they're going to have your medicinal values more so than the taller matured plants of flower heads. Because much of the energy stored within the root that you're after is wasted on the flowers. So uh, plants of flowers aren't as ideal as first year plants. Secondly, first year plants are going to have more tender usable roots than the hard woody roots of the matured flowers. So this is a first year valerian here, growing right next to a matured biennial uh, later year valerian. It's got those leaves that you can use to identify it.